Hey guys, Iron Trap Garage, uh, doing an episode on the free tee today. I'm going to do a quick little uh, bit here. So we worked on, Mike and I got the back half of the car fairly solid with that box tubing that we added and we drilled and tapped everything. Uh, we added some box tubing in the front and everything's starting to feel a little more solid. Um, I decided I want to try and get this flange up here uh, remade because it is... Uh, it's kind of causing the cow to, to twist around a little bit still and uh, I think if we add this piece in it's going to really strengthen up the front cow of the car and we can start kind of working our way back and, and uh, picking away at different things. So I'm going to make this piece here today, show you the process, uh, hopefully get it welded in place and then uh, we can you know, move on with some other stuff. So let's get started. Okay, so we got our piece bent up. Uh, I'm still too much of a cheap ass to buy a big break, so I have to do it the uh, old-fashioned way over a sharp edge. Uh, for this car, it'll work just fine. Um, so, what we're gonna do here is I got a center line made right there. We're gonna match it on that piece of tape that I have for the center line. So we're gonna start um, shrinking this edge to bring this to come down and around on either side. So we're gonna make some marks and measurements and uh, that will keep us uh, shrinking the same every time so we can have a nice continuous flow. So we'll get this marked out, put it on the shrinker and we'll show you how we do that and come back and test fit.
Okay, you can see this is starting to come in. The bend's going the way that we want, but what's happening is it's starting to uh, dive back like this where the cow is coming forward. Uh, so we got to address that first. So we are initially shrinking on this edge here to bring it around how we want. But now because it's starting to dive back that way, we need to hit this top edge here and stretch it. What that's going to do is it's going to pull it back around the way that we want so that we can continue to shrink this. So we're going to have to go back and forth on these two edges working to get it to wrap around and match what the, uh, the cowl is. But uh, it won't take much with the stretch. Uh, with the stretcher to, to stretch this edge, just a couple little taps, it'll be back to flat or where it needs to be, and we can keep moving. So we'll, uh, we'll show you going back and forth and get that going pretty quick. Okay, so I did just a couple of quick little taps on the stretcher, and you can see that this edge, especially this one, is kind of evened out. It's going the right direction that we want, so we can start stretching or uh, shrinking it down. This side I can see needs just a little bit more. I just didn't press uh, quite as hard on, this, on the stretcher pedal. Uh, so this one's still diving in just a little bit, so I'm going to do a couple quick hits on there, and then we'll, quit, uh, we'll continue to work around on this. But you can see just a couple really um, easy presses on the shrinker or stretcher can get it going in the direction you want. You don't want to just start pushing as hard as you can. You just be real light and, uh, and you can get it to do what you want. So we'll, uh, we'll keep working on this.
man, that was that was a long weld. So uh, pretty long weld that went all the way across the cow from end to end here, but I got it all welded. Uh, nice thing was I took a, the time. Uh, we didn't bore you guys with with all the footage of that. I took a lot of time in cleaning uh, the weld seam. We're dealing with basically 100 year old metal, so there was some paint, some primer that I had to, uh, to cut through. I uh, used Eastwood Contour SCT, worked really well. Blew through all that, but then I needed to take 80 grit and, um, and a file and really clean up in this area. And then I actually took a sander on the inside to get all the surface rust that was underneath here to make sure I had a really nice clean weld seam. Because if I didn't clean this up, uh, I was definitely going to have issues with it popping up on me and having contamination. So um, that was a big help to do all that. It took quite a bit of time, but got it pretty good. Uh, I have it all welded in, like I said, but I didn't finish out the weld at all yet. Uh, I didn't want to make this video go too long, uh, so I left that to do some other time. But the big thing is we have a nice, strong uh, flange on here again so that uh, this thing is getting more solid. It's not going to fall apart uh, without having, you know, a thousand clamps on it. Uh, so I need to just bump up this whole weld seam and just adjust any any shrink that occurred. And uh, I just need to hammer on this flange a little bit to get it nice and flat uh, from clamping on it and tweaking on it. Uh, I, our flange here isn't exactly uh, flat, but that'll be a few minutes with a hammer and dolly, get it all nice and flat, be good to go. Uh, we can sand the welds a little bit and it'll be good enough for now uh, until we get to the stage of being ready to actually do body work on this thing. Yes, it will get painted. Um, we're not talking high dollar paint job, but it's going to get paint on it. Uh, it's going to look at least half decent for a um, castaway Model T project. So that's all I got for this time. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, as always, we do videos at least once a week. Um, we, uh, when we're rolling good, uh, we do videos on Tuesdays on the, the, uh, the free tea, uh, and Fridays on the Sweetheart Roadster, and I've been working away at the Sweetheart Roadster, but that has some much larger projects that are taking weeks at a time to film doing, uh, those parts, so in the meantime, I'm doing the smaller projects on this so we can keep getting videos out to you guys, uh, once a week. If you like what you see, definitely give us uh, a share or a like, um, and, of course, subscribe if you guys uh, want to see more of uh, Nitty Gritty of Building Hot Rods. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.